Hello, everyone. Firstly, we apologize, but it was not possible for us to be present at Milano. And I would like uh, to thank the organizer, in especial Mae. Firstly, we apologize, but it was not possible for us to be present at Milano. And I would like uh, to thank the organizer, in especial Mae, uh, for allowing us to present our paper via this video. Uh, we are Karim Haddad, the composer, Gonzalo Romero Garcia, and myself, uh, Carlos Sagón. And we work at IRCA. Hello, everyone.
Hello, everyone. Firstly, we are but it was not possible for us to be present at Milano. And I would like uh, to thank the organizer, in special Mae, uh, for allowing us to present our paper via this video. Uh, we are Karim Haddad, the composer, Gonzalo Romero Garcia, and myself, uh, Carlos Sagon. And we work at IRCAM at the musical representation team on uh, the Open Music Project. So the paper we are presenting today is a bit particular because it focuses on a sequencer in Open Music called the Maquette, which uh, was actually introduced at this conference many years ago. So the obvious question is uh, why we are talking about something that is over 20 years old, or more than 20 years old, the main reason is that the maquette uh, uh, has always been discussed from the user perspective and never from a computer science standpoint. In other words, we have never really given a formal definition that explains the underlying semantic of this maquette. So today I will try to explain why it is important to go beyond just a discursive explanation of the semantic and I will also discuss the impact that we are aiming to have on composer. So here is the plan for the talk. Uh, firstly, I will start by showing you some examples of what a maquette is. Then I will explain why it's natural to understand this sequencer from a monad perspective. And finally, I will try to answer the question it is really important for a composer to understand what a monad is. So let me begin by introducing Open Music. So Open Music is a functional programming languages designed by computer music composition, developed uh, in Lisp at IRCA uh, over 30 years ago. So the main idea behind Open Music is to enable the composer to create functions that generate and transform musical materials. Uh, for instance, here we have a function that is called transp definition. Uh, this function takes two arguments. There is a graphical definition of the function that takes two arguments. Uh, the first one is a list of MIDI numbers, and the second one, a number of semitones. That's called tones. And the answer of the, of the function is a list of MIDI numbers transposed by this number of tones. This is a, a very, very, very simple function. This function, of course, can be used within the definition of other function, for instance, here. In this example, when we evaluate the function with these two arguments, here we have the function, and when we evaluate it with these two arguments, uh, the result is a list of pitches that correspond to this chord that we Hello, everyone. Firstly, we apologize, but it was not possible for us to be present at Milano. And I would like uh, to thank the organizer, in special Mae, uh, for allowing us to present our paper via this video. Uh, we are Karim Haddad, the composer, Gonzalo Romero Garcia, and myself, uh, Carlos Sagon. And we work at IRCAM at the musical representation team on uh, the Open Music Project. So the paper we are presenting today is a bit particular because it focuses on a sequencer in Open Music called the Maquette, which uh, was actually introduced at this conference many years ago. 
So the obvious question is uh, why we are talking uh, about something that is over 20 years old or more than 20 years old. The main reason is that the market uh, uh, has always been discussed from the user perspective and never from a computer science standpoint. In other words, we have never really given a formal definition that explains the underlying semantic of this market. So today, I will try to explain why it is important to go beyond just a discursive explanation of the semantic. And I will also discuss the impact that we are aiming to have on Compose. So here is the plan for the talk. Uh, firstly, I will start by showing you some examples of what a market is. Then I will explain why it's natural to understand this sequencer from a monad perspective. And finally, I will try to answer the question, it is really important for a composer to understand what a monad is? So let me begin by introducing Open Music. So Open Music is a functional programming languages designed by computer music composition, developed uh, in Lisp at IRCA uh, over 30 years ago. So the main idea behind Open Music is to enable the composer to create functions that generate and transform musical material. Uh, for instance, here we have a function that is called transp definition. Uh, this function takes two arguments. There is a graphical definition of the function that takes two arguments. Uh, the first one is a list of MIDI numbers, and the second one, a number of semitones. That's called tones. And the answer of the, fun of the function is a, a list of MIDI numbers transposed by this number of tones. This is a, a very, very, very simple function. This function, of course, can be used within the definition of other function. For instance, here, in this example, when we evaluate the function with these two arguments, here we have the function. And when we evaluate it with these two arguments, uh, the result is a list of pitches that correspond to this curve that we can see here and that we can hear also. Okay, so each time that we evaluate this function, we get a result with a list of pitches that correspond to, to this curve. Now, what is a maquette? A maquette is a sequencer where we set function rather than musical material. The main idea of the maquette is to place function within a specific context. In other words, a maquette acts as a context where we can position function to abstract the evaluation and their functional composition. For example, let's take our function and place into this maquette three times. So I take my function here and I want to put one, two and three times in this in this market. And then when we eval and play the market, we can see here three times the curve produced by the evaluation of this function. But of course, because this is a sequencer, the idea is that I can change the position of each curve that is given by the horizontal position of, of, the, of these boxes. And then we can play again. In this example, we are only considering the horizontal position of each box. But there are actually many other parameters that we might want to use. For instance, 
if I put my function in this other market and evaluate it, I get this score. But if I change the color of the sequencer, I take uh, another color and I put a uh, This one, for instance, and and evaluate again, I get a different code. What's happening is that it is the same code, but transposed by a number of semitones based on how much red is the color on the market. So if I put a big quantity of bread in, in this new color. So at the evaluation, my curve is more and more transposed. Here is a more intuitive example where the transposition of the curves depend on the vertical position. When we move, when I move the boxes up and down, So when uh, we move the boxes up and down, there is changes in a way that is more natural from a notation perspective. Finally, here is an example where two programs are functionally composed. Uh, the composition is denotated by this uh, link, which indicates that before evaluating the lower function, uh, we need to evaluate the upper one. And in this particular example, no matter where I set the onset of, the, of this box, the lower one, uh, after the evaluation, the lower one adjusts its position to follow immediately after the upper one. For instance, if I move the box here, after the evaluation, the second box uh, meets at the end uh, the, the, the first one. Uh, it happens because before evaluating the lower box, uh, it takes the onset and the duration of the upper function as input here. And additionally, to calculate the curve, the, the lower function also adjusts its onset. All right, so how do these examples work? Let me take a look uh, at this maquette, uh, which is a bit simpler than the other one. The trick here is that we have added two extra variables to the input and the output of the function. These two extra variables give us the characteristic associated with the function called in the maquette. Visually, this addition is represented by this box, where we can get uh, information like the offset, the duration of the box, the color of the maquette, and many, many, many other, other different parameters. So in this example, we take the vertical position of the box and we use this information to transpose our curve. For this reason, the three calls of the same function uh, will be produce different results. Okay, now it is time to talk about monads. When we try to give a semantic to the expansion of output types uh, in our function, the concept of monadic function naturally comes into play. Uh, when an open music function is placed in a, into a maquette, it becomes a monadic function because we have expanded the function's type. In our paper, we use the state monad, uh, where for simplicity, we only consider the function's onset and duration as information. In fact, the state of these monadic functions can be defined by the composer 
without altering the semantic of the evaluation. In this article, uh, in this paper, we propose an initial formalization of the semantics of maquettes using the state monad. However, there is still work to be done when it comes to the hierarchical structure of maquettes. It is, uh, since we have elevated the maquette uh, to the label of a function, nothing should stop us from placing maquette inside another maquette. As you can see in this example, I can get a new maquette and put into this maquette uh, and put into this maquette other maquettes and the result after evaluation is the is the combination of two maquettes that we can eval and play. Okay, before wrapping up, I would like to take a few minutes to address what I think is the most important question of this paper. Uh, the question is, uh, does a composer gain anything for knowing what a monad is? Uh, in fact, the market in open music was proposed by two composers, Tristan Murray and Joshua Finberg. And based on their ideas, we implemented the sequencer in open music. So another way to rephrase uh, the question will be to ask whether it will be useful for these two composers to know that their intuition aligns with a concept from category theory called Amona. Personally, I am curious to know the opinion of these composers if one day they read this paper. But now the answer that I would like to give uh, to, the que to the question, does a composer gain anything for knowing what a monad is, is of course, yes. Um, my answer, of course, is based on two musical issues that I believe are well uh, taken in account by the monadic approach. The first one is the concept of timing of the musical material. As we said at the beginning, functional programming is useful to modelize the construction of musical material, but it is not the case to modelize the set in time this musical material. Or in any case, these two things don't follow the same logic. And I think that the separation of these two procedures can be well taken in account by the concept of the monad. The second issue concern the musical form, and in particular the relationship between different parts of a piece. The musical form is a very, very abstract notion. Sometimes we talk more about the elaboration of the form than the discovery. And it implies that the relation be between parts are more than a casual or a temporal relation. Uh, we need uh, an arbitrary notion of what the composition of the part is. And for me, this is the exact definition of a monad. As we put in the paper, the monad is the abstraction of the functional composition. It is important for me to show that uh, all this abstract theory gives concrete results in terms of, of music. Uh, let me show for this uh, a piece uh, called the uh, first attempt escape from silence is uh, the section tunnels. And this uh, part of the opera is composed by the composer uh, Karim Haddad. And we can, we can see here a sketch, a uh, maquette of the, of the piece. And then we can see a first uh, proposition of the structure modelized in the maquette in open music by the composer. And at the end, the final result uh, after some uh, uh, computation of this structure. Uh, all this uh, hierarchical structure and uh, functional composition is hidden 
when we listen the piece. I I invite you to listen an excerpt of, of the piece. To conclude, I would like to add that functional formalization based on the principles of abstraction and application is for us, above all, a creative strategy. The idea is that a computer experimentation push the composer to modify the model more than the result. And this is for us a truly artistic gesture. Thank you.